Hi, I'm Paul Torgerson. It's Tuesday, December 11th, 2018, and this is a look at the information security news from overnight. From securityweek.com, the cyber espionage group referred to as Muddy Water has hit over 130 victims in 30 organizations from late September to mid-November. Muddy Water was first detailed in 2017 when it was mainly focused on targets in Iraq and Saudi Arabia. In late November, researchers found a new PowerShell-based backdoor very similar to malware employed by Muddy Water, which has been named Power Muddy. The threat actor, which Symantec refers to as Seedworm, has been focused on gathering intelligence on targets in the Middle East, as well as in Europe and North America. From ZDNet, Google revealed a second bug in the Google Plus API that could have been abused to steal the private data of nearly 52.5 million users. The bug, which resided in the People API endpoint that apps and developers used to get information about user profiles, came to light following internal tests and was not exploited by any third party, at least based on current evidence. Following the discovery of this new bug, Google has also decided to move the shutdown date for the consumer version of Google Plus from August of 2019 forward to April of 2019. From bankinfosecurity.com, the hacking of a credit card processing system has prompted a Texas hospital to notify regulators and nearly 48,000 affected individuals of a breach as required by the HIPAA breach notification rule. Baylor Scott and White Medical Center said that on September 29th, the hospital discovered an issue with a third-party vendor's credit card processing system. The incident impacted patients whose payment information, including partial credit card information, was compromised. Although the credit card breaches are relatively rare in the healthcare sector, another card-related breach reported in August by Arizona-based Banner Health opened the door to the exposure of data of millions of individuals. From securityweek.com, a recently discovered piece of malware targeting Mac systems is the combination of two open-source programs. Detected as Darth Miner, the threat is distributed through an application called Adobe Z, that's Z-I-I, which supposedly helps in the piracy of various Adobe programs, but which in this case does nothing of the sort. In fact, the fake Adobe Z software doesn't even use the stolen Adobe Creative Cloud logo, but a generic automator applet icon instead. The fake application downloads and executes a Python script, which then ultimately installs various other goodies, including a backdoor and a crypto miner. All the appropriate details in the Security Week article. And finally today from ZDNet, a Russian cybersecurity firm says it discovered login credentials for more than 40,000 accounts on government portals in more than 30 countries. The data includes usernames and clear text passwords, and the company believes they might be up for sale on underground hacker forums. The account details appear to have been collected over time by cybercriminals with the help of off-the-shelf malware strains such as Pony and the Azor Alt info stealers, uh, but also the Quackbot multi-purpose Trojan. It's good to have a multi-purpose Trojan, isn't it? It's believed that the people behind these operations might filter and group the government accounts into separate packages to advertise and sell online. No word on what other types of packages may ultimately hit the dark web. That's all I have for you today. Have a great rest of your day. And until tomorrow, be safe out there.